here in the Council Chambers. If you would rise with me and join in a moment of silence in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please, Bill. Granquist? Here. Lange? Here. Merrill? Here. Clausen? Here. Murin? Here. Jackson? Here. House? Here. File? Here. Okay, with that, I will look. For a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Considerations on there Second. Okay, Bruce, that I want to bring up. Um, we have uh, gone into discussion of the consent agenda. You're not robots. We can talk about this. What I want. That? You're not. You're not robots. I want to talk about the uh, Aquaventure Water Park, the agreement with Stanton County to provide dispatching services, including police functions for the city of Stanton, and consideration of approval of an agreement with specialty telecommunications, 18, 20, and 21. Okay. <coughs> Item number 20 and 21. Um, we have, I think, uh, if you remember the last meeting, had an extension, extensive discussion on this, and, um, I'll, I'll be real short about these. It, it's not going to take very long. There. They need to be taken so off just, there. Just yeah. Okay. Bruce, um, yeah. it is allowable to discuss these, but they first would have to be removed from the consent agenda. And you'd have to. I, well, before we that. discuss them, could I just ask some questions about them? In, order, real in order to discuss them, we'd have to remove them. Well, then the let's consent. remove them real quick, because it won't take very long. Okay. Like, it probably only takes so twice we, as long as we spent here. We, uh, number 20 and 21, correct? Uh, 18, 20, and 21. 18. The so agreement with the Young Men's Christian yeah, Association 20, for the water. Okay. All right. You made the motion. We've had a uh, request to remove. Um, Items number 18, 20, and 21 from the consent agenda. Your Honor, I would I would amend my motion on the consent agenda to include removing items 18, 20, and 21. Okay. You don't want to? Okay. Is there a second? Who was There's the second? motion? Who was the original David, second? He doesn't oh, agree with second? it. Oh, you did second. Okay. I'm not agreeing to that, so I'm not withdrawing my oh. second. Okay, I would second that. Okay, there's a motion and a second to remove items 18, 20, and 21 uh, from the consent agenda and place on the regular, on the full agenda. Any discussion on that? If not, please vote on that, please. Well, voting in favor of the motion, Council Members Granquist, Lange, Merrill, Clausen, Murin, Jackson, file go to voting against the motion. Faust, motion carries. Okay. So, Bruce, we'll, we'll, we'll now consider the full agenda with those uh, attached, and then we'll come to those items when it's Thanks. their time on the full agenda. So, I would look for a motion. I think there's been a request for another um, change to the full agenda. So. Uh, would entertain a motion in that regard. Yes, Your Honor, I would move consideration of the regular agenda with addition of items 18, 20, and 21 moved from the consent agenda and the request for item 44 to be removed from the regular agenda. Okay. The addition of 18, 20, and 21 to the full agenda and the removal of item number 44. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Sorry. Discussion on that. If none, please vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative. Okay. So moving on to the full agenda. Um, taking up first item number 18. And that, and I'll read that for the sake of the audience. 
is um, consideration of approval of an agreement with the Young Men's Christians, Asso Christians Association of Norfolk, Nebraska, a Nebraska nonprofit corporation, allowing the use of the eight lane swimming pool located in Aqua Venture Water Park from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. June 11, 2017 through August 3rd, 2017. Do so we have a motion? I'll make a motion, Your Honor. Second. Okay. Um, right. I'm Bruce Finley of Norfolk, Nebraska, and I just wanted to ask, uh, what is the YMCA paying to use the water park for these three hours across uh, June 11th, 2017 through August 3rd, 2017? Bruce, the, uh, the agreement that's on there provides for no compensation, uh, no, no, no monetary compensation. Why is this water park letting people use it for free? Uh, this is a public thing. People should pay for using it. That was my only complaint. Um, the, the, uh, it's one of many uh, city facilities that has that, that is utilized by the public uh, without uh, compensation. That's, a, in effect, a, a policy. Uh, uh, all of those agreements are approved by, by the elected officials. And, um, this is something that has historically been done. I, yeah, this I've done I, it for many I years. I can help with that uh, as well, Mayor and Council. You know, this is a longstanding agreement that we've had with the YMCA for their Aqua Jets program. Um, there's some reciprocity as far as uh, um, them partnering with us as well as when we train our lifeguards. We have a whole battalion of lifeguards that operate our, our uh, Aqua Venture. Um, and this is going back before the Aqua Venture facility was uh, um, in the city of Norfolk. We've had this uh, agreement to use an outdoor facility when we had Memorial Field too, as I recall. So in, in uh, consideration of that reciprocity between the YMCA and the city, we've um, just used it hit for that, I guess, and it allowed them use, and they gave us uh, use for their facility because we usually have to train those lifeguards in the winter time to get them prepared. So um, we've used the YMCA uh, to do that and, and some of their personnel to help us with that as well. So it's been a great arrangement for a long, long time, and it just continues to be that successful. I would still prefer people pay to use the water park. Thanks. Okay, no questions or comments on that discussion. If not, I uh, would ask for your vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative motion carries. Moving to item number 20, uh, consideration of approval of an agreement with Stanton County to provide dispatching services for Stanton County, including those police functions for the city of Stanton to commence on July 1st, 2017 and terminate on June 30th, 2022. So move, Your Honor. Second that, Your Honor. Okay, motion is second. And while it's been involved in this, uh, I Shane, do you want to talk you about know. the Absolutely. background on this? Bruce, do you want the background or do you want to speak first, Bruce? Uh, that question. The, it's really simple what I wanted to state. It's just, if we needed to hire new police officers just recently because we were shorthanded, but now we're selling them off to Stanton, like, did we need them? Is this gonna put us at risk? Or was, was the need for them not there? We're not selling any police officers off to Stanton County. Uh, uh, all we're doing is this is an, again another long-standing agreement that we've had with Stanton County to provide dispatching services for their police and sheriff uh, and EMS personnel. Um, it's been successful. You know, we try to share resources the best we can. Obviously, there's a lot of cross connection in uh, in law enforcement uh, with our staff since uh, Stanton County is right on our eastern border and and Woodland Park is there it's just inside of uh, Stanton County, right on our our border as well. So when you think about all the uh, the connectors as far as the police response and Stanton County's response when they're having like information coming from the dispatch center with professional dispatchers that our dispatching center provides it just makes sense to share those resources and and move in a positive direction for those services and this is a continuation of that staff is, uh, has sat down with uh, 
uh, Stanton County and uh, negotiated this uh, in a very positive way. Um, both parties are satisfied as far as the staff perspective goes and the, uh, the agreement that you have in front of you tonight is the fruit of that uh, negotiation. May I, Mayor? Yeah. Um, Bruce, I think that you're talking about paragraph one of that agreement and I think that you may be misconstruing it. What we're saying here is Stanton County has a separate agreement um, with the city of Stanton to provide law enforcement for the city of Stanton. And so uh, our police dispatchers are dispatching for Stanton County deputies. And when they do that, they, that includes uh, the arrangement that, that Stanton County has with, with the city of Stanton. So they're paying for that. And it's just, it's just part of it. And, and so uh, we're not, we don't have police officers go in there. It's just the Stanton County deputies, both through the county and they have a separate arrangement with the city of Stanton. I, I understand how it works. I just have criticism of it because I would prefer we took care of just Norfolk and didn't have any entanglements with other cities around us. I believe this causes a lot of problems. That's my only complaint about that. I could respond to that as far as the entanglement comment. Uh, entanglement's probably, a, a, I wouldn't choose that word personally as uh, we, I would more choose the word of partnership through mutual aid agreements and, and uh, automatic aid agreements that have been long established in law enforcement, fire and EMS for many, many decades. You know, here in, in uh, little old Norfolk, Nebraska, we got to rely on each other across the board throughout the, throughout the counties, our sister counties and our personnel that provide those emergency services. If we uh, hunker down and bunker down and have that kind of mentality, we'd get ourselves in trouble because oftentimes, uh, the, well, always, the emergencies happen locally. And sometimes that happened in Stanton or Battle Creek or Madison or, or Hayter. And sometimes they happen in Norfolk, Nebraska, and without those resources coming our way and vice versa, uh, we run out of resources quickly and we can't uh, do a nice job of providing that public safety atmosphere. And response. So that's why we do that. It's been successful for many years. I think that's well said and it should be reiterated. This is a longstanding uh, regional law enforcement partnership that I think when you really consider it does maximize um, regional government resources in an efficient way. So any further discussion, questions, comments on that? Well, I guess the only other comment that I'd have on it, it, it is a sign of where everything is moving towards. Uh, we're, we're not an island sitting here. We have people around us. And uh, I think as we watch in the decades to come that we're going to see th this extent of intergovernmental relationships happening on a much broader basis, even with counties and and counties working together that way. So to be opposed to this is kind of being opposed to moving forward. So. Comments, council? If not, I would ask for your vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative motion carries. Item number 21, consideration of approval of an agreement with specialty telecommunications services LLC for professional consulting services for replacement radio and tower proposals. <coughs> and again, for background, um, I'd ask Lyle or Shane to talk about. I can do that as well, Your Honor. You bet. Oh, I'm sorry. Lyle and, uh, we need a motion first, yeah. Um, I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Sorry, Shane, go ahead. That's okay. Uh, Lyle and the public safety chiefs and the public works uh, personnel have really been working hard on developing a plan to address our radio s system. Um, to be honest with you, we've had a radio system that's getting decades old. Uh, you know, when you look at the, as you look at the connectors of the radio system, what it means to public works and public safety, and then you expand that beyond our borders, it gets complicated fast. Technology is changing so rapidly out there. Uh, we often say, and have said many times, we're pushing talk guys, you know, we want to make sure the radio's working, we push push them when we're doing our operations in public safety and public works. That's a lot of times the, the depth of our knowledge when it comes to uh, the technology piece of that. Um, we've been talking about this for a couple years already, and uh, there's great opportunity as we move forward if we have some professional help from the outside to uh, get state of art 
um, public works and public safety radio communication <laughs> system, not only potentially for us, but actually it goes into the statewide potential for the statewide system connectors as well as, and, and our, obviously our area law enforcement and public works response. So um, this particular consultant's uh, recommendation has been through a subcommittee and they recommended that we move forward with the contracting for those services so we can ask all the right questions um, because there's many vendors and there's again a lot of technology out there that we want to make sure we understand and we're going to put up a new tower uh, to replace uh, our water tower where all the current uh, radio communication system is hosed. Housed, excuse me. Uh, so we're going to do that too, and we're tying all that together as in one in one uh, shot here, and that's why we're going to bring the consultant on board, or would like to. Thanks, Shane. You're welcome. Uh, that was all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Any questions, comments, council? If not, there's a motion and a second. Uh, please vote. All council members present, voting in the affirmative. Motion carries. All right, moving to public hearings and related action. Item number 33, I'll open this public hearing at the request of SMW Underground Services, Inc. to consider a hard surfacing waiver at 1003 West Monroe Avenue. And uh, Valerie, would you open this uh, with some background? Yes, thank you. As you mentioned, this is SNW Underground Services on Monroe Avenue. They have built a new building, and this is one of the processes, you know, the hard surfacing requirement from a paved road up to their required parking is one of the requirements when you uh, do a new building or a building permit. And they are requesting a waiver for this. Um, it did go through Planning Commission, and what you see as the resolution on there is something that staff put together because um, we did not get into the details of putting a resolution together because Planning Commission actually denied this on a 7-0 vote. So since um, that is a recommendation, we had to have something on the City Council for you all. Um, so this is something that we put together based on uh, normally a paving waiver is a temporary waiver something that is phased in so you'll see in there that this shall expire in five years we just put kind of a standard number that we've seen in other paving waivers for that and this is something that you all can make changes to if you so choose if this goes forward and then also to mention too that it is for 1003 West Monroe. The building address that uh, triggered this requirement is 915 Monroe. It's kind of different because the access to 915 is actually through 1003. The, the buildings and lots are owned by the same person. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Valerie, this is a commercial property? It is a commercial property, yes. There's a public hearing. Anyone wishing to make comments? Can come forward, do so now. Bruce. I remember two people coming in here before asking for a waiver, and they weren't commercial businesses. They were average people being asked to pave a road so that they can build a building on their land. But I wonder, is it really even their land? Is there any respect for private property rights in what parts? Because they're being forced to build a road. They need your approval and permission before they can build on their land. So I feel like it's not even their land at that point that they're rent renting it. So I'm, I'm gonna ask, what, what parts of private property do we respect here in the city council? question, Bruce, but I think it goes, gets to uh, the nature of planning and growing a community um, in which, <coughs> as you see in communities across the nation, it um, necessitates for some order to be some zoning and planning requirements in, in place for, for order to preserve the opportunity for orderly growth in the future. 
So the people in the area are asking for a waiver because they don't want the road, but the city council wants the road here? So it's not, a, <coughs> if I may, if I may, Your Honor, it's, it's not a road. It's, a, it's an apron and it's an access road to, not a road, but a access drive to their property. So it's absolutely on private property. It absolutely is private, privately owned. So coming off Monroe Avenue, there's a requirement code that you have to pave a certain amount of, of your access. You have to get from the hard surface road into the building itself where the public parking would take place. That's the requirement that's in the city code. The mayor and council have the ability to waive that if they choose to. But as the mayor uh, said, in an orderly growth of a city, you wanna make sure that your paving comes together and in a nice fashion so people will have good solid streets. Monroe Avenue was just, re was just repaved recently and if you look at Monroe Avenue, you look at all the commercial properties along that area, 99.9% uh, .9 of them are paved all the way mm. to their buildings. So um, we don't want to drag, drag gravel off of a non-paved parking area. This is really a parking area we're talking about onto that paved road because of obvious concerns of, of doing that. So um, this has been through a subcommittee as well. Um, and and through the planning commission as Val indicated and you know the results of that. So again, why are the people who want the road not the people who are paying for it? Why, why are you making people who don't want this paved have to pay on their own land? Again, for the orderly growth of the community, we have paving requirements, just like we have streets and driveways that go to homes and residents. Um, we want paving to, as our community continues to grow and we're on a a nice growth pattern right now so we want to make sure the paving goes in that we don't have gravel roads gravel parking lots intersecting with gravel with uh, paved roads the problem comes in when you compare the cost of having to pave this to the benefit it presents for the community I mean the, if the people there don't see the benefit the people who live there don't see the benefit and they're in disagreement then it just looks like selective enforcement of the law it's not selective and the whole community sees the benefit Bruce because we travel those the community travels those paved roads and they see the benefit by having a nice hard surface if you're handicapped you have a hard surface to get out of your home and enter the base to the commercial business um, so all those everything affects everything else in, in government and in life so when you have those kind of requirements they're really for the benefit of the whole community as a whole not just individual landowners Right. Uh, our local government is uh, trying to manage the economy instead of protecting and expanding our rights. Instead of protecting and expanding our rights, you just assault them at every turn. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you gave them the waiver and then didn't give other citizens the waiver. It's ridiculous. You shouldn't have that control over the economy. You shouldn't be involved in that. You should be serving this person by helping them with good advice about where and what the best practices are for that land in the area and give reasons why they should pave the road there and they should decide whether they're willing to do it or not. It shouldn't be something that the city can make them do. Bruce, it's, this is code. This is a code question. And we do believe in personal property rights because we're allowing them to come before us for a waiver. Okay? Oh, so well, now, now, thank now, Bruce, you. okay. Thank you for giving Here's your, me okay, the Okay, so what if, what if, what if? I'm in construction, right? I have to follow city code. Mm -hmm. If I build you a house and I put the wrong type of two by fours, two by six, two bytes in your attic and your roof comes crashing in because I don't follow city code, are you still gonna be up here saying, hey, you don't respect my personal property right because you can use whatever material you want up there. I, I would sue you because you, you didn't do your job properly. <laughs> so now, Bruce, now you walk on this guy's property and you trip on the gravel and slip and knock your head, are you gonna sue him too? Because he didn't, put his, uh, he didn't pave that properly? Uh, that's different because no, I'm going on to his property. You are, you're talking about the same thing. This is protect people's rights. By protecting people's rights, we have city code so people don't do things to cause you physical da or bodily damage. There's already remedies in place for it is what I'm saying. What? What remedies? If we you don't sue. follow city code, then what remedies? You take what remedies? it to a judge and a jury. Against what basis are they going to prove that with no code? You have to prove it that they infringed upon your rights, I'm that they you harmed right your let's, safety. Let's get off this. We're just no more engagement. Let's okay. No, I, I have one more First, thing we, to we say. We do have a rule oh, that each. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's a public hearing. We don't have any. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're not, we're not let's to that get point. a question. Then. 
Uh, we still are at a public hearing, but there is a time limit of five minutes uh, given to each uh, subject um, area and presenter, and I think we've reached that limit on this one. So um, if there are other members um, of the audience wishing to comment uh, as part of this public hearing, they're welcome Anybody to Anybody want to give me five more minutes? I got plenty to talk about. <laughs> Doesn't work that way, Bruce. Oh, I can't speak five more minutes if someone would be willing to give me five more minutes. That's All right. Correct. All right. It. I mean, you don't want me to speak. That's fine. Is it? Anyone else wishing to comment? Okay. If not, further discussion on council? Um, seeing none, uh, planning commission report. On May 16, 2017, the Norfolk Planning Commission reviewed the application for modification of the hard surfacing requirements submitted by SNW Underground Services. The Planning Commission recommends denial of the request with a 7 to 0 vote. Okay, with that, I will close uh, this hearing um, and move to item number 34, looking for a motion to consider. Resolution number 2017-30, approving the hard surfacing waiver for S&W Underground Services, Inc. at 1003 West Monroe Avenue. Uh, quick question. So this is to approve the waiver, right? Okay. It's, yeah. Your Honor, I'd move consideration of 2017-30 to bring that to the floor. Just vote no. Just vote okay. no if you don't want to Any, approve it. Tell him that. Any discussion on that? Your Honor, I, as uh, I see how the uh, Planning Commission looked at it, and also, I mean, it's it's orderly growth, contrary to much of the earlier discussion in the uh, public session. Um, that's how cities grow and how municipalities develop in an orderly manner. Um, you don't need rules when, when you're a man on an island, but when you come off of the island and you are around other people, there are rules and codes, and uh, with that being said, the, um, the, the, the um, code says that it needs to have access with via a paved portion coming into it, and thus I would uh, be against granting this resolution. I will be voting no. Coming in, I've I've heard lots of him, lots of uh, different sides of the pavement waivers, and as the city develops, it's becoming an issue where the pavement waivers have been put into place, and now we're having to go back and ask people to put in sidewalks, driveways, and whatnot. And I just think that we need to, if the code is there, it's there for a reason. It needs to be enforced, and uh, that there shouldn't be any pavement waivers if it's in place to put pavement in there than it should be put in I got a quick question for Valerie um, as far as where are we at when it comes to coming up with a plan for as we move forward with uh, you know I was on the subcommittee so that's why I'm asked the question uh, you know when it comes to paving and paving of lanes and whatnot because it's gonna this is kind of falls right in line with that discussion I believe we're still working on that ordinance and what we spoke about in the subcommittee about that potentially 75 feet if you're longer than that that was for residential mm -hmm. and we did not discuss something shorter than from the road to the parking for commercial and industrial only residential was at that point is that something you know we're going to be discussing in the future here as we move forward because I can see situations where you know if you're developing um, and your buildings say your commercial building is three four hundred foot away from the road you know and we're going to be in the same boat again do we need to get to a place where we have something in writing that says hey listen your lanes this long off the you got to pay this much your lane commercially residentially you know so we have something here because what happens with s and w if okay they don't their waivers not granted they pay everything and four months from now, we have a new, uh, 
new code that states something different. So the night guy that builds next to him has only, you know, 70 foot of paving or 35 foot of paving, you know. So I just, I don't really feel comfortable going in this discussion, you know, having this discussion about a possibly enforcing a pavement without having something with, with the possibility of it, you know, changing down the road. If that's what you all would like us to do, we can certainly look at commercial and industrial properties down the road. Like I said, we had just talked about residential properties that way, like if they were um, 300 feet for building a new house off of a, a road, then we were talking about that potentially 75 feet in between the garage and that 75 could be gravel. Um, I don't know if it helps you at all. Approximately 125 feet is what it is from the edge of Monroe to the edge of their paved parking stalls for S and W. So even if we had 75 feet for them, it'd just be a, a short little section right there if um, of about 40, 50 feet. I guess my point though is that we haven't really decided if, if it's even going to be the 75 foot. You know that. Right. It could be. It might. Maybe it's 40 foot because that's what you know is required when we're on a construction site for bringing you know so you don't bring gravel out or mud out to the streets. You know we have our little shake off, we call it shake off area. So, I mean all those discussions are going to be in play. I'm just <coughs> something I think before we enforce something or deny something, then I think we should have the clarification. But. Well, that we have discussed that, like I said, but current code says all the way from the required parking. I mean, that is what is on the books right now. Thanks. Questions or comments, Council? I just believe the last time we discussed this, we was going to go and enforce what was on the books until until it changes. But I think we're right around. I mean, we're going to be changing this here shortly. It's it's on the it's in the discussion. And I know the commercial is going to come up with along with the residential. So, but until until that changes. Yeah, well, I'm I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I guess is what I'm saying because if it does change and it becomes shorter. Mm -hmm. Or, or we just keep keep enforcing it. You know, we could be potentially saying, "Hey, pave your lane," and then three months from now we say, "Don't pave your lane." You know, I'm just could be some conflict there. It, yeah, it's a it, it's a difficult situation given the discussions we've had about uh, sorry about, that, about um, potential uh, revising of these. Um, uh, codes, but as Councilman Jackson said, to the consistency that's provided by adhering to the code um, helps prevent problems down the line in terms of um, uh, having to order in things that that uh, never got put into place in the first place. So, um, Bruce. When I read Te technically we're mm -hmm. open for the discussion on when I read the city code, I find all of these incredible problems with how it's worded, how it's written. I don't have any confidence in the code writing the way it stands currently of the Norfolk City Council to guide us down the road of economic growth better than the ten thousand people in Norfolk, Nebraska spending their hard-earned money on what they believe is best, spending it on the things they believe will make the city good, them as individuals choosing how to spend their money. The government's there to protect and expand our rights of freedom. When we get a bad government like we have right now, they're always claiming it's for your safety. We need to be the middleman so we can pick winners and losers or the economy will fail. I guarantee you the economy in Norfolk, Nebraska is struggling because of all of this overregulation. Our government now is enormous compared to what it was back in Omaha when it was much smaller long ago. And yet our government hasn't done a better job. It hasn't, it hasn't governed better. 
It's just expanded our debt and costs, and we lose our freedoms and rights every time. Every time, why is the Norfolk City Council so busy handing out TIF tax breaks to million dollar buildings? Like this is, this is so ridiculous that you can make someone pave a road on their own land. Like, I, it's baffling that you think this is a good idea when they don't wanna put that road there. And the danger of it, the danger of it for you that I'm going to warn you of in the future is what if there's another city council that comes in and legally and fairly they decide that the decisions you made here were wrong and they expect, because your votes are on record, they expect you to reimburse the rightful property owners for the cost of these roads with interest. Like what if that comes down the line? Like the whole idea of you getting involved in this is terrible for the economy, for private property rights, Bruce, and for the expansion Bruce, of government. The same, the same government you said is unfair and unjust has given you the right to stand here and speak today. So. No, I have the right, I whether the government gives it to me or not. But yes, I understand. I do feel very privileged and grateful to be able to speak to a city council that's elected rather than one that's appointed. Okay, and with that right to speak, we <laughs> also have to stick to an agenda and consider the things before us. So back to the question at hand, um, there is a motion and a second for uh, a resolution approving the hard surfacing waiver. Um, again, a yes vote approves the waiver, no vote denies. Do we have further discussion? Okay. Uh, seeing none, uh, roll call, please, Beth. Voting in favor of the resolution, Council Member Clausen. Voting against it, Council Members Granquist, Lange, Merrill, Murin, Jackson, Faust, File. Uh, motion fails. Resolution 2017 30 is denied. Okay. Moving to item number 35. Uh, opening a public hearing at the request of Renee Bauermeister to consider a zoning change from A, Agricultural District, to RR, Rural Residential District, on property generally located a half mile east of Highway 35 on Benjamin Avenue. And Val, can you kick this off for us, please? Yes, thank you. This, like you said, is about a half <coughs> mile east of um, Highway 35. It is in Stanton County. Um, this request to RR zoning is not in compliance with the comprehensive plan that recommends in this area to uh, discourage large lot residential and so that we can um, progress farther east um, with orderly growth with like standard R1 zoning and it's actually um, in the comprehensive plan agriculture still zoned because we don't expect <coughs> to probably expand that far out with one zoning in the next 20 years, which is the comprehensive plan. Um, and you'll see if this passes tonight, there is the plat that is coming up too. If this does not pass tonight, then we'll have to also pull the plat just as kind of a heads up. If there's any questions. Okay. Thanks, Valerie. Um, this is a public hearing open to comment for anyone who wishes to come forward. Good evening. I'm Dick Johnson, Johnson Engineering, and representing Renee Baumeister on this zoning change. Uh, basically, this is to sell off an existing homestead. The lot, when it's all said and done, would be about a little over four and a half acres, I believe. We're dedicating 50 feet of street right of way as is required. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's no plans for any future development. We aren't doing anything to affect the density out there. It's just a lady that wants to sell off her land. Uh, she owns uh, about 120 acres, if I remember correctly. So when it's all said and done, you're going to have the same house sitting there. It's just going to be under different ownership. Okay. 
And we, oh, we did take a look at, uh, after talking to staff, at uh, possibly making it uh, R1, but the uh, maximum lot size in R1 is an acre, I believe. Two acres? Well, not enough anyway. But we need to have three acres for a septic tank. So this seemed like to be the best choice of the way to go. How many acres is this? We're just Pardon talking. Me? We're just talking four acres for the RR. Or you, you, the it's whole four point six eight or something like that, and fifty the, feet of that is street. The rest of the land is staying ag. The rest of the land is staying ag. Yes, and Did as far as like I know, there's no plans acres? to develop anything. One hundred ninety-two acres or so. Something like I don't remember the total acres, but they've yeah. got quite a bit. And there's there's a house currently on there. Yes, property. house and some outbuildings, which is what the buyer is buying. They've got a. Uh, say all in place and ready to go and as soon as we can get it approved by the city if we do okay. Any Other questions for Dick? Thank you, okay. uh, you. Dick um, she Technically, I mean if, if she wanted to if she sold off 40 acres it wouldn't <coughs> even come before us would it? Pardon me? If she sold off 40 acres it would not even come before us? Right Okay so there is an option to sell off the property. Well, the whether company. they can, whether they want to or not, uh, I don't know. I doubt if they want to. I think they want to keep the rest for pasture land or farmland or whatever. Uh, and I don't know that the buyer can afford to buy 40 acres. Okay. Thanks, Dick. Thank you. And this is a public hearing. Anyone else wishing to comment? Now's the time to do so. Seeing no more discussion. Um, Planning Commission report, please, Beth. The Norfolk Planning Commission held a public hearing on May 16, 2017 at the request of Renee Bauermeister to consider a zoning change from A, agricultural to RR, rural residential, on property located generally one half mile east of Highway 35 on Benjamin <laughs> Avenue, the Planning Commission recommends approval of the request on a seven to zero vote. Okay, with that, I'll close the hearing and move to item number 36. Uh, looking for a motion to consider ordinance number 5475 approving the zoning change from A to RR on property generally located half mile east of Highway 35 on Benjamin Avenue. I'd offer for consideration ordinance number 5475. Second. Okay, Any further discussion on this council? Seeing none, short title please, Matt. An ordinance of the city of Norfolk, Madison County, Nebraska, amending the zoning distri district map of the city of Norfolk, Nebraska, providing when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and providing for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Okay, and please vote. Voting, voting in favor of the ordinance, council members Granquist, Merrill, Clausen, Murin, Jackson, Files, File. Voting against the ordinance, Councilman Lange. Ordinance 5475 carries on first reading. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Item number 37, we'll open up this public hearing to consider a blighted and substandard declaration for the area referred to as the Metalman Lake Redevelopment Area, generally located south of Norfolk and is an estimated 292 acres of land. And I think to kick this off, we hear from Jan. I'm Jan Merrill with Northeast Nebraska Economic Development District, and I have completed a blighted and substandard study <coughs> on the Metalman Lake area so that TIF can be used for redevelopment of this area. The Nebraska Community Development Law identifies six substandard factors and 16 blighted factors to look for in these studies, and I have identified both substandard and blighted um, in the study area. 
Uh, one of the factors is deterioration of structures in the area, and 80% <coughs> given a rating of poor, fair, or deteriorating. The age of the buildings in the area, 100% of them are 40 years or older, um, and the average age of construction was estimated to be about 46.75 years. <coughs> Um, the existence of defective and adequate street layout is also a factor. Um, in the development area, there is literally um, no streets, sidewalks, curbs, gutters at all. So um, there needs to be established um, utilities, public streets, sidewalk systems. And then finally, um, the one of the factors is any combination of such factors which substantially impairs or arrests the sound growth of community or retards the provisions of housing accommodations. In the uh, Norfolk Comprehensive Plan, it envisions growth and expansion of the city to the south of the Elkhorn River, the redevelopment area being close proximity to the south side of this river would otherwise constitute a barrier for orderly growth in this area if it did not develop initially. Um, the extension of city services, including utilities throughout the redevelopment area, is required for the orderly growth of the city as the comprehensive plan states. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Any questions? Any questions? Jan, I guess not so much a question, but uh, that's when I was reading through this stuff, I saw we're only taking into consideration the land area and the lake is not part of the the lake has been excluded in the redevelopment area so the acres do not apply correct and mm -hmm. just wanted that so that was stated that is in the correct. record how, how many acres is that just the lake um it's 292 that is actually going to be blighted and substandard um i can look up if you want to know what the lake is i think it was like 175 give or take a few acres okay. just for 116 and change. Okay. And then there's another 22 acres of uh, area where there's an existing brand new home that's not included as well. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't think so. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Tom Houston. My address is 233 South 13th Street here in Lincoln, or excuse me, in Lincoln. Uh, I'm appearing before you tonight representing uh, Metalman Lake Development, Inc., and Paul Metalman uh, individually. Uh, the, the matter in front of you is that the blight study under the Nebraska Community Development Law, this is the first step. We have probably six or seven steps that will be in front of you for the approvals for this project. As I mentioned, the blight study is the first step. We'll be back in front of you for uh, a redevelopment plan amendment or a redevelopment plan to uh, really plan out the development of this uh, development and uh, we anticipate that would be coming before you in the next 30 days or so. We also have uh, uh, a requirement that the property be annexed. The entirety of the property will be requested for annexation all at once, not a phased annexation. Uh, in addition to that, uh, following once the plan would be adopted, there would be a redevelopment agreement that would be on your agenda uh, to move the project forward for the phase one project. Uh, correspondingly, on the other hand, that there's the land use components that have to go forward with this kind of development. Uh, there will be a request for a change of zone for the entirety of the property, and the phase one portion will be approximately 18 lots would be the phase one development uh, that would be uh, uh, platted as the first final plat that would move forward. Uh, we anticipate moving forward with all of those documents uh, concurrently. Ideally, we would have the whole package on your agenda. Under the community development law, we can't do that. Uh, we have to take things in a sequence and a step, and so we're taking the, the next step in front of, in front of you today. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have of me. I, I work in this uh, community development area across the state, and I'm seeing multiple cities using this tool. Uh, to help finance infrastructure development. In my count, there's about six different methods to uh, finance infrastructure, and this is the one that allows the most orderly growth, the most phased type of approach uh, that is consistent with most of the goals of the comprehensive plans that I see. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So if you want us to annex you, then you're taking on the burden of the streets and sewer and everything that we're going to have to do out there? 
the request for annexation uh, that the statute does require a plan for delivery of services to be adopted it'd be our recommendation that the plan adopted by the city would use the tax increment financing method of financing for the installation of the infrastructure. Tom, can you talk a little bit more about the phasing um, aspect of this particular plan yeah. and what, what that means? The, the, the total number of lots is approximately 188 uh, around the lake, and no one's going to install infrastructure for 188 lots in one fell swoop. Uh, the, the phasing would uh, phase it so that uh, that the first phase I said I think is approximately 18 lots and it really would be based upon the timing the ti the phasing is really based upon the timing for construction and sale of homes and that absorption rate as developers call it no one is sure what that will be and so the phasing concept allows development to uh, and infrastructure to be installed on a timely basis and a sequence basis so that uh, uh, everything happens in an orderly basis without too much risk on either anybody's part, really. And subsequent phases would be similarly sized, probably 10 to 20 lots per phase. Okay. And your hope, uh, the, the timeline hope is what for phase it's one? It's anticipated the first phase uh, is a, a three year phase. It would take three years to really develop and sell 18 lots. Uh, it may go quicker than that based upon my experience in other communities. There's a demand for housing in every city across our state. Uh, Norfolk included, and probably in Norfolk, probably in more than a lot of cities I'm working with, working in. Um, but we're, we're anticipating on a conservative basis a three-year build-out for phase one, and similar for subsequent phases. Okay. Any other questions for Tom? I'll write my name down quickly. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to comment may do so now. TIF is government controlled growth, not free and fair market growth where the consumer has a say in how things are done. Instead of TIF growth, why don't the people who take over this area have to pay a fine for letting the land become so blighted? Why don't they pay to resurface the roads? You can make people do it from quite a ways away, I imagine. Laborers ask for government minimum wage, and big businesses and corporations want government bailouts and TIF tax breaks. Who loses when you enact both? The consumer loses their right to vote with their hard-earned dollars. This is a no for a TIF tax break. This is a no vote. There's no reason to do this. If this place here wants to be developed by some corporation or something, let them come in and do it. But the government should not be forcing itself, putting its foot in the door to be the middleman that everybody has to go through to do anything. That doesn't make things better. That just lets the government control the growth. You call it orderly, but I see it as robbing people of the right to spend their money on what they believe in. Okay, this is a public hearing. Anyone? else wishing to comment it's your opportunity to do so now seeing none further um, planning commission report please and the Norfolk Planning Commission reviewed the Blyden substandard determination study for the area referred to as Middleman's Lake Develop redevelopment area on May 16 2017 the study comprises an estimated 292 acres of land that is located south of Norfolk the body of water known as Lake One, which is calculated an area of approximately 116.65 acres and a tract of land which has a calculated area of approximately 21.84 acres is not included in the redevelopment area. The Planning Commission recommends a approval of the declaration of Middleman's Lake redevelopment area as blighted and substandard with a six to one vote. Okay, with that I'll close the hearing and move to Item 38, consideration of resolution number 2017-31, declaring the area generally located south of Norfolk and an estimated 292 acres of land and referred to as the Metalman Lake redevelopment area as blighted and substandard. Your Honor, I move consideration of resolution 2017-31. Second. Okay. I think we had 
pretty st straightforward discussion of what this is and what it accomplishes. Accomplishes. Any further discussion or questions or comments by the council? Just one comment, Your Honor. You know, the uh, testimony was against TIF out here. That's not what we're considering here. We're considering the blighted and substandard study. We're not any further along than that. There are steps as as the representative presented that have to be gone through. So the resolution is for for the blight and substandard study only. I think it's a good, good comment. This is a process and it uh, starts with careful consideration of whether um, an area qualifies in accordance with uh, requirements in state law to be eligible um, to be de defined as blight and substandard. So that's where we are uh, in the process and any other comments or questions by the council and if not uh, please vote all council members present voting in the affirmative resolution 2017 31 is adopted okay moving to the reg regular agenda uh, item number 39 um, <clears throat> consideration of resolution number 2017-32 approving the final plat and subdivision agreement of Bauermeister's Benjamin Avenue addition. We need to take one. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah. Uh, because uh, ordinance number 5475 did not pass in all three weight readings, right? We didn't, we didn't suspend the rules. We'll have to table 39 in doing so. So I'd ask Move that we that. table uh, resolu resolution 2017-32. Okay. Mo motion to table resolution number 2017-32 in a second. Any further discussion on that? If not, please vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2017-32 is tabled. All right, number 40, consideration of ordinance number 5476, amending section 24-293 to reflect current tenants and owners as it relates to restricted parking lots listed under section 24-293 and enforced under section 24-292. I think, Chief, are you gonna help us make some sense of that? Your Honor, members of the council, uh, this ordinance is uh, basically a housekeeping measure. Uh, we did a review of the locations, businesses that were listed on there. We've updated them. We've contacted uh, businesses to make sure that they wanted to still remain on uh, the restricted parking lot uh, ordinance. And so what this reflects now is uh, a current updated listing with all locations actually wanting the service that is provided there. Uh, what this allows is the police division can uh, enforce uh, vehicles that are using, say, uh, a, a business's private property as a shortcut to either avoid a traffic light or to avoid having to go down to the end of the street and turn at the intersection. And uh, uh, we have to be requested to do so by these businesses and the council has to approve it. So basically all of these businesses uh, wish to be included in that, that effort. And we would ask that you would approve that. I'm glad to answer any questions. Beth, just remind me before we do that, we, we do not have a motion on the floor. I'll offer ordinance 5476 for consideration. Second. Second that, Your Honor. Any, any questions or comments on that? Okay. If not, uh, short title, Beth. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to amend section 24-293 of the official city code to update business or property owner names and addresses for enforcement action related to driving or turning on public or private property to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Okay, please vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative ordinance 5476 carries on first reading. Your Honor, I move to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 5476 on second and third. Second. Okay. If no discussion on that, please vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative ordinance 5476 carries on second and third. 
Okay, moving to item number 41, <coughs> consideration of ordinance number 5477, enacting section 1820 of the city code to prohibit parking of semi-tractors, trailers, trucks, and certain other vehicles in Johnson Park. I'm looking for a motion. Your Honor, I move consideration of ordinance 5477. Second. Okay. Uh, Chief, can you kick this off for us? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the police division has received uh, several complaints uh, over past months and, and even years about trucks and uh, trailers being parked in Johnson Park, particularly that area that is kind of that gravel parking area just to the south of uh, Nebraska Avenue uh, between that and the spillway. <coughs> and so in an effort to uh, eliminate that, this ordinance would basically <coughs> prohibit the parking of trucks, trailers, unattached trailers, uh, that type of thing within the entire park, including uh, that little parking area that, that would be on there. Uh, this ordinance is similar to the prohibitions that we have on the public streets, uh, with a couple of exceptions that will be taken care of in the next ordinance, uh, and then they will be exactly alike. So, be glad to answer any questions. Chief, could just define certain other vehicles for me, if you would. Uh, I'm thinking that other vehicles would be if you had uh, large trucks. Uh, the, the goal was to try to eliminate larger trucks and uh, uh, the specific complaints were a semi-tractor and trailer. But we were also looking at trying to avoid larger trucks, but we did not want to eliminate pickups because so many people use them as a personal conveyance. It's long, you're looking at long-term parking. Like people will leave their trailers sitting there for a while, and when you say park, no park, long-term parking. I mean, like I've I've fished in that spillway. They catch fish in there, so if you was just to pull up there and park your fish, that's not a big deal. But long-term parking, leaving your truck there for a few days, would be what you're addressing with this. That's the most serious. That's the basis of most of the complaints. Uh, I would imagine if somebody were to park there uh, temporarily, fishing, something yeah. like that. Uh, probably would not generate uh, right. the type of complaint that would get a law enforcement response. You're talking on um, on an overnight basis in some circumstances. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, Chief? Uh, any other discussion among the council? If not, short title, please, Beth. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, to enact Section 18-20 of the Official City Code to prohibit parking of semi-trailers, tractors, trucks, and certain other vehicles in Johnson Park to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Okay, please vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5477 carries on first reading. Your Honor, I would move that we suspend the rules and pass ordinance 5477 on second and third reading. Second. Okay. If no further discussion on that, please vote. All council members present voting in the affirmative. Ordinance 5477 carries on second and third. Okay, item number 42, uh, consideration of ordinance number 5478, amending section 24-60 of the city code to clarify said section related to the parking of trailers, trucks, et cetera, on the street. We have a motion on that. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay, Chief. This particular ordinance is the one that I referenced before about parking on the street. Um, as, as we looked at this ordinance, as we were developing the ordinance for Johnson Park, the prohibitions there, it became clear that the way that it was laid out uh, made it pretty difficult to understand exactly what was being prohibited and what was being allowed. It was all just in one paragraph. So after reviewing it, uh, we followed a similar format that we had in the Johnson Park uh, prohibitions, what will actually line out one, two, three, four. Uh, what will actually be prohibited. In addition, this ordinance will eliminate the uh, prohibition of any vehicle that has a uh, five ton or greater sticker or certificate on it. Uh, it was brought to our attention that there are some pickups, if they are 
pulling trailers or heavy loads that they may be rated higher than that, uh, but they would look no different than other pickups out there. So uh, what we've done is we've eliminated that and we're going just with the length of the box that's not done that. Anything that would be in excess of nine feet on the box would be prohibited, uh, but that would not include uh, any of the pickups that, I, that I'm aware of there. Uh, the other thing that we'll do is it will also uh, prohibit the parking of a vehicle that has an uh, attached trailer to it. Uh, so you can't have the, the trailer attached or attached to the vehicle on the, on the public streets. And again, would be similar to what was done in the, in the Johnson Park ordinance. That way, there's no difference. They're both the same. And there's no misunderstanding where you can park, whether you're in the park or whether you're actually out on the public street. Would like to answer any questions? So if somebody pulls up and uh, uh, detaches their trailer and then pulls their pickup forward, they're OK? No, they couldn't have an unattached trailer. trailer. OK. OK. Any further questions for Chief? What about like, you know, if you're doing a construction project? And you're working on the roof, or you're working on, and you have your trailer, can't park the trailer there? Now, there is a, a specific exemption for uh, trucks and, and vehicles that are actually involved in doing actual repair work, or they're loading, unloading, delivering, anything like that. So while you were actually involved in the work project or something, that would be an exemption to this actual enforcement. And just say you can't, you say some guy at a car trailer comes home 1030 at night, doesn't want to drive to another place to drop off. You can't pull in front of his house, park overnight, and the next day get up and leave? Or No, that would, that would actually be in violation of that ordinance. And actually, wouldn't you be in violation then if you pulled up to a job site and you left your job trailer there overnight? Is that a violation? If you're involved in actually working at the job site. Uh, at night when there's nobody working. Well, that, that can be a little bit problematic. We would encourage folks, if they're going to do that, at least have it marked well enough so that at night there'd be reflectors or something like that that, that you could see it from a, from a safety standpoint. Any further questions for Chief? Thank you. Further questions or comments among the council on that? If not, short title, please back. An ordinance of the city of Norfolk, Nebraska, to amend section 24-160 of the official city code to clarify said section related to the parking of trailers, trucks, etc., on the street to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. Okay. With that, please vote. Who's not voting? Voting in favor of the ordinance. Council members Lange, Murin, Jackson, Files, File, voting against the ordinance. Council members Granquist, Merrill, and Clauston. Ordinance uh, 5478 carries on first reading. With that, uh, we move to item number 43, consideration of resolution number 2017-33, uh, approving the mayor's appointment of city officers as required by section 16-308 of state statutes. Your Honor, as uh, to bring this resolution forward, I would introduce this resolution 2017-33. Okay. Motion is second. I'm going to start uh, the process here, um, making sure that we have um, opportunity for full and open discussion on this. This is a process that uh, every four years um, necessitates um, careful deliberation and uh, uh, discussion and um, an opportunity to uh, evaluate uh, city operations and if you'll bear with me I know we've had a uh, somewhat lengthy meeting to this point but I want to open this with uh, with a statement 
and then we'll allow opportunity for further uh, discussion and, and questions on it. Um, as I said, the appointment process required by state law and city ordinance comes just once every four years at the beginning of a new, year, new mayor's term. By its very nature, it's a weighty and serious process, and it's not one I took lightly. It calls for evaluation of numerous factors, including long-term direction and vision for community growth, and development and seamless management of ongoing projects. The arrangement that is laid out before us in resolution form, which we'll get into more detail in, in a minute, allows, I believe, for an opportunity of restructuring that best utilizes city resources and staff expertise, with the underlying goal of positioning the community to maximize growth opportunities and build upon a culture of good customer service and public safety in coming years. Uh, how and why did I come to a decision to make changes? The determination I've made boils down at the end of the day to what I see as a need to structurally shift focus at the top administrative levels of city government from one of uh, risk management to one of long-term planning and growth opportunity. This shift, I believe, is necessary to position the community for full development potential in coming years. What do I mean by restructuring? To achieve this shift, while maintaining keen focus and continued excellent public safety services, I believe it's necessary to fully develop a structural model put in motion years ago. You may have noticed that the city of Norfolk has a fire division and a police division as opposed to police and fire departments. This is not by chance. Several years ago, plans were uh, to create a public safety department to oversee police fire and risk management units. The idea was that administrative collaboration brought on by the efforts of one public safety director could benefit interoperations within the divisions and allow an administrator to focus on long-term planning for best practices in various areas, communication, use of technology, et cetera. The only problem was that the plan was never fully implemented. The role of public safety director consequently fell to one of the many responsibilities of the city administrator thereby weighting much of his focus on public safety, but not allowing for the needed time to carry out the, all the functions of a true public safety director. What I am proposing tonight is a decoupling of that public safety director role from the city administra administrator position, fulfilling the plan for a public safety model and allowing a shift of focus in the city administrator position. I believe this change benefits the city in several ways. It can lead to the direct integration of the economic development role into the city administrator's position, achieving the shift in administrative focus I referenced earlier. It also utilizes staff expertise to a maximum. I'm fully confident that we would all agree that you could conduct a, conduct a national search and not find a more qualified candidate for the role of public safety director than Shane Widener. Shane and I have discussed this restructuring potentiality along with public safety officials and other staff and see several opportunities for the arrangement to strengthen the divisions through increased communications, planning for adoption of best practices, and improving regional law enforcement and public safety partnerships. We have also discussed Shane's service to the community as city administrator, during which his character, integrity, and commitment to bettering the city of Norfolk was of the highest caliber. The arrangement also addresses the need for our city to plan for transitioning in the area of city attorney services. Clint Shukai has served Norfolk for nearly 25 years admirably, providing legal services on almost any and every case imaginable for more than two decades. This plan allows the city to begin a search for his replacement, a hefty feat, while he continues to act as our attorney and helps organize and digitize the wealth of information and records he's accumulated on behalf of the city over the course of his career to the immediate benefit of his eventual successor. So what lies before the council tonight is a path forward to initiate the process of making these changes. The resolution uh, before us in amended form indicates that letters from both Shane and Clint have been received, resigning their positions on identified dates in the future. Until that time, or until their successors have been named, 
they will continue serving in their roles as administrator and attorney. The resolution also calls for four-year appointments of City Clerk Beth Deck, City Treasurer, Treasurer Randy Gates, and City Engineer John Heine. While this plan brings about change to City Hall, I think it does so in a responsible fa fashion that places targeted focus on long-term community planning and growth, achieves efficiencies within City Hall that best utilizes staff expertise, respects the dedicated work and integrity of two good men who have given long careers to the City of Norfolk, and positions our community to maximize growth opportunities and build upon a culture of good customer service for years to come. At this point, I'll stop there. Um, the council has uh, resolutions before them in an amended fashion. Um, they have been, the resolution has been altered slightly from what appears on the council agenda as reflected in my uh, statement. And there will be time for discussion questions, but at this time I'd uh, invite Shane to make comments if he would like. Yes, please. Well, um, <laughs> thank you for the kind words, uh, Mayor, and, and thank you for the opportunity to address the council. Uh, I can tell you that uh, the city of Norfolk has been a tremendous, tremendous blessing to me and my family. Um, the opportunity to serve in the capacities that I, I get a little, a little teary eyed talking about it because it, it means a lot to me. And you know, that opportunity that the citizens have given me to, to be a servant of them um, in the many roles that I've been able to fill over the last 27 years has been an exceptional honor. So I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that uh, immensely. Um, I've had a great opportunity to, um, to be involved in people's lives in a, in a big way, uh, in emotional ways. Um, from the death and dying of, of our citizens to the birth of our citizens and, and all the relationships that you form as a public safety provider. Uh, I was able to do that for about 21 years. And then um, also, as fate would have it and opportunity would have it, uh, was able to serve the community as the city administrator, uh, which is, again, has been a major blessing for me and my family and, and, and to help, uh, help provide that role, you know, and guide, guide uh, the city at a, at a time um, six and a half years ago or so when, when there was a, a bit of acrimony, for lack of better words, it seemed like um, yeah, in the community. Uh, I was able to work with a team of people, business leaders, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, city staff and spades uh, to help uh, kind of press the reset button and, um, and uh, develop a, a nice economic development program and, and uh, be able to hire a city planner and bring those things together after lots of community discussion and interaction and, and focus uh, to, to set, the, set the table, I guess, um, if you will, for, for what I, where we, I believe we are today. Um, you know, those kind of things happen because a lot of people roll up their sleeves and, and they look each other in the eye and they make commitments to each other. And that happened in this community in a big way. And I was, um, again, honored to have a, a small piece of that as your city administrator. So, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, you know, to resign the, this position uh, in, in a lot of ways, but um, also an honor to uh, have potentially have the opportunity to, uh, to serve in a public safety capacity uh, again um, at, at a diff just in a different role. Um, I think there's wonderful opportunity there, obviously, for me and for the community, I think, as we look towards the, f the future. Um, I can tell you that uh, when Mayor Sue asked me to do this job six and a half years ago, I did it with much reservation. Um, I was pretty 
pretty happy with my role as the fire chief back then and and uh, that role gave me that opportunity to be in a position where where you uh, get to make uh, uh, almost instantaneous decisions and gratification because of the role of the public safety provider out there on the street so you know I, I I think fondly about those memories of the flood and the fire and uh, those those kind of events that happen periodically to a community of our size or even a smaller community so I was honored to do that but I did take the city administrators role with some hesitation um, but when I looked across the city staff and knew the caliber of people that uh, were going to uh, prop me up for lack of better words and uh, help me to get get uh, the resources needed to press that reset bu button in City Hall um, it became an honor really it became an honor to do that because uh, they're they're top-notch you know and the fabric and I've described this a, a number of times over the last week the fabric of the city of Norfolk is maybe a bit faded uh, but it's woven together tightly and and that is from decades of uh, interaction the decades of commitment to to doing the job in a good solid way and that's across the board I've had the opportunity across the board of a city staff uh, this last week to have some real serious eyeball time that frankly I've frankly I kind of kind of didn't do enough of as city administrator to be honest with you um, so I've had opportunity to kind of just visit with staff about that fabric and and it just reinforced what I was able to see as a city administrator when you're sitting on that branch of the tree you get to see the whole pie you know instead of just a slice or two of it and uh, and I'm proud of them I'm proud of all the staff they uh, they do an outstanding job for the city and and uh, we have our warts and, and scars as any organization does but um, the caliber of the public servant there at uh, for the lion's share of of our staff and your staff mayor and council is as solid as rock so I appreciate again I appreciate the opportunity to work with uh, with with you all and the opportunity that these our citizens have, have given me it's been an honor so thank you very much thank you Shane Shane uh, I've had uh numerous conversations over the last uh, couple of weeks and some of them have been hard uh, conversations and change when you're talking like about change like this it's it's never easy but I think and it's my hope that it can lead to um, opportunities for this community to, to grow and um, opportunities to utilize uh, the great talent that we have on this uh, staff in a very uh, efficient manner and um, so uh, if, if functionally here what we have before us and what's before the council <coughs> is um, an amended resolution from what's on the agenda packet there's cop copies of that resolution uh, before the council I would um, want to allow for further discussion but at this time entertain a motion um, on that amended resolution so we can all be talking about the about the same thing since the resolution has changed from what was published in the council agenda your honor as i was the initiator of the resolution uh 2017-33 to bring it to the floor and in light of the um the um a uh, couple letters that have been uh, received and passed out to this council I would move uh, changing the resolution for discussion as uh, noted in the attached package second second okay there's a motion and a second on that and so everybody knows we're reading from the same script I'm gonna you know we've been here a long time but I'm gonna uh, read the resolution as it now is and as uh, Councilman Lange, um referred to there are letters attached to the resolution um, resolution number 2017-33 where section 
two four of the Norfolk City Code provides that at the first meeting in June, following the mayor, mayor taking office, the mayor shall appoint those city officers required by law. Uh, section 16-308 of the Nebraska Vice Statutes provides for the appointment of city clerk, treasurer, engineer, attorney, administra and administrator by the mayor. And the mayor has received letters of resignation from Shane Widener and Clint Shukai, and the following appointments for those city officers will be on an interim basis while search process is commenced and conducted. The mayor is appointed subject to confirmation by the council and in consideration of the receipt of letters of resignation, the following officers for a four-year term pursuant to Section 16-309 of the Nebraska Revised Statute. <coughs> uh, Clerk, Beth Deck, Treasurer, Randy Gates, Engineer, John Heine, Attorney, Clint Shukai, Administrator, Shane Widener, with asterisks on Attorney and Administrator. This appointment, asterisks, this appointment is on our own basis while a search process is commenced and conducted as letters of resignation have been received from Shane Widener and Clint Shukai. Uh, now, therefore, in consideration of the foregoing recitals, Mayor and the City Council, the of the city of Norfolk hereby adopt the following resolution and it therefore uh, it goes on to uh, state the officers um, again and ends concludes saying be it further resolved by the mayor and city council of the city of Norfolk that the letters of resignation from Shane Widener Norfolk City Administrator and City Attorney Clint Shukai are accepted by the mayor and Norfolk City Council the mayor and city council will intend to comply with the understanding expressed in the respective letters of resignation which understanding came about after discussion with elected officials. Letters of resignation are attached here too and made a part of this resolution. That is the resolution as it now reads. Um, there's an opportunity for uh, discussion or comment by the council at, at this time. Well, I'd just like to say, uh, Shane, um, you know, about seven, eight years ago, we both, I came into the council and you came, you were asked to become a city administrator and. Uh, you stepped in that role and you took that sacrifice for the city of Norfolk and that won't be forgotten. I mean, that's means a lot. It means a lot to me. I think it means a lot for everybody who was here sitting there when we kind of were, you know, we didn't have a city administrator. Al Roder was gone and we were kind of stuck. And I think you touched on it earlier. Um, we were at a point in our community where we were greatly divided. I see some chamber directors. I see the home builders out here. I see a lot of city leaders. I see the fire department here. Um, we weren't always like this. and it's hard to stay like this but at that point in time uh to credit you and your staff and uh the city leaders it was you know brought together the chamber now is in discussion with the city administrator you know it's a powerful relationship the home builders have a bigger say, stay or more say now than they ever had um and you continue to build that for the last few years and so you are a man of integrity and and honor like you stated and i've i've always believed that um with much thanks and it's been a great privilege for me to get to know you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, you know, then as you're, we were going through this process and, you know, I got a chance to sit down and talk to you and kind of hear about your loves and dislikes about different things and um, kind of sacrifice you were making, it, it led to the point where we're talking about today with this public safety director. I think firmly and I think you did a tremendous job of growing the city administrator's role and almost took it to a point now where we're at a situations, a crossroads kind of in my, my, in my mind, where you know, your knowledge and your expertise is greatly needed in this community. And I think that we're onto something here with you and, uh, the future, and as Norfolk grows, that I think can be, uh, take a, you know, obviously a negative to, and maybe and it turn it into a, a positive for this community moving forward. So again, I just wanna thank you for everything you've done. I appreciate that very much. I'd like to say, too, that I'm one of the few councilmen that I've got to work with every city administrator that the city of Norfolk has ever had. And we keep taking steps forward, I believe, and keep moving forward and keep growing every time we do something different. Um, working with Shane has been a pleasure. He's done a great job, as you said. But I think now this restructure, he's going to be a little happier and a little stronger, even more strong than he was before because now he's at his specialty, I think. And he helped us get through a tough time there. Now I think he's gonna help us grow faster with his new duties and uh, the things he's gonna do because I think he is fit perfectly for this job, so. Shane, I have the, the utmost respect for you as a, as a employee of the city of Norfolk, but as a, as a, as a man and a family man. 
it's I came on council same time Shane did and I'll echo what he said the you made it all fit and as I said I, I just have the utmost respect for you as I'm as I know many many if not all of the folks in this community do growth is hard growth is never easy and I think it's incumbent upon this council to put to position skill sets where where they are best utilized for continued growth but I think also that skill sets have to be positioned for personal growth and for personal fulfillment and overall happiness and I will be very supportive of you in this new endeavor that we're going to try to craft it. something that utilizes the terrific skill sets that you have working inside the fire division inside the police division as a public safety director so once again I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you've ever done for this community thank you Carlson. I yeah. truly appreciate that I, I do want to say that um, again the the thought process and the discussions leading up to this point were were difficult difficult ones to have but in uh, both cases cases with Shane and and Quint they um, they they listened to my reasonings they um, so to understand the changes and we got to a point where this could be an opportunity because at their very nature I think they both want to see the best interest of the community served saw an opportunity to make this not an abrupt overnight disorderly change but a change that takes place with an orderly transition that allows for the shift that I reference, but also um, utilizes our, our resources and our expertise in, in the best manner possible with the goal of, of serving the community well uh, for years to come. And so I, I want to thank both individuals for undergoing those difficult discussions with me, um, having served and, and still serving in, in their capacities in a in a dignified and high quality manner um, with a great heart for this community. Uh, so that's, I'll, I'll stop there and ask for any other comment or question or discussion. I would also like to thank Clint uh, at this time also for his service, 25 years of service. Pretty near. No, no, we're getting there. Uh, you've put up with a lot of things. I'm sure you've seen a lot of things. And uh, you've always had our backs while we're up here. We've always appreciated that. I'd just like, like to say that I hope uh, leaving here tonight, everybody understands that either one of these gentlemen were <clears throat> let go lightheartedly or because they did anything wrong. They did an outstanding job. As a new city councilman, I uh, learned a lot from both of them. And They've always been able to answer questions just whenever I've called and, and had a question for them, and I really appreciate that. And the staff that's in place below Shane is is a is an awesome staff. I I uh, have said before that they uh, truly care about the city of Norfolk, and uh, when they're looking at their jobs, they they take it very personal, and uh, I think that means a lot. And people in the city don't understand what they do have here. But uh, thanks, Shane and Clint. And I guess what I would like to reiterate is that um, I was the, uh, the initiator of the resolution to bring it to the floor. I was also the initiator of the amended resolution um, due to the fact of the uh, letters that we received that were dated I guess here today that way um, again as been, as has been voiced throughout this meeting so far is that you know uh, Mr. Widener's uh, um, 
service to the community has been great in all the capacities that he served and very appreciate it that way and um, looking to see him stay forward what the other thing though that I think that's even more important is if you if the community has the opportunity which since it is a public record is able to read the um, letter penned by mo both gentlemen but more importantly I think the um, the letter penned by Mr. Shukai is is very important uh, oftentimes I've uh, get in and about the community and um, for lack of, 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 of um, a better process or a better word, I hear idiots say that all Mr. Shukai does is a traffic cop or just handles a few things like that. The most ridiculous statement I've heard, short of maybe a couple that I've heard this evening, but uh, um, I, I think if you go down the list of things that Mr. Shukai is involved in and uh, will continue and help make this a transition if, if and when uh, someone else takes over his position, that, that it's simply amazing. You know, um, uh, many here don't remember the, um, the uh, 90s when um, the, the legal counsel was hired out. And um, we, we took the legal counsel underneath the uh, wings of the city at the time of the sighting of the, um, of the landfill in Stanton County. And if, if you don't remember that and want to go back and read about the, uh, the extreme things that occurred then, uh, makes for some kind of interesting reading. I lived it. Uh, was not on the council at that time. I came on the council in not too many years past that and um, have been uh, just awed that the the availability and the, um, the um, uh, information, vast knowledge of information that, that Mr. Shukai has put forward. Um, uh, again, if, if, um, if you wrongly believe that, that, that he is strictly a traffic person, um, I can't help it if, if, uh, if, if, if you sit with such an ill-informed, um, mind and process that way. Uh, for us to ever even consider going back to hiring out legal counsel uh, is ludicrous. I think if you look across the board of uh, class one cities in the state of Nebraska, we were the leader in that process. And uh, I think you'll find very few of our size that do not have full-time legal counsel. And with that, I'd like to say thank you to both gentlemen. Um, and we'd like to see how things continue on forward. I'm, I'm glad Councilman Laney uh, pointed out Clint's letter to his credit. And it is public record. You can find it. It outlines the multitude of uh, different services that uh, that office provides. And I think leads to an important point in this, that this is initiation of a process for a, a search for a replacement that won't been overnight. It will take some time, and it will take some time um, to uh, make sure that, that, uh, that we get that replacement right. And in the meantime, um, again, Clint, to his credit, uh, uh, took on tasks that would help benefit whoever that eventual successor is, um, including uh, digitizing existing files, which if you've been to Clint's office ever, that's going to be a job. Because I don't think 25 years ago you were able to start entering any of those things into a database. So, But again, that's a process in which um, it's initiated to help lead to a successful transition um, uh, to uh, a, a new city officer at some point in time. So, um, council, any any further questions, comments, discussion? You know, I I got to thank Clint. When I in his position, if you're a if you're a firefighter, if you're a fireman, you pull somebody out of a burning building, you're a hero. I I think Clint's 
maybe a little bit different if you stand in front of the judge and you're prosecuting somebody. Uh, you may not get that same pat on the back from from the folks you're down there uh, talking about. So it's a little bit, certainly a little bit different. I gotta I gotta say that working with Clint over these last six and a half years has been a pleasure because Clint has a, he has a great sense of humor. When I first got on council, he was nice enough to send me a a copy of an ordinance that uh, that is in our in our city on pickpockets, pickpockets and vagrants. And, and to this day, I'm not exactly sure why he sent it to me. <laughs> I have I have a, a feeling, but I'm not I'm not sure. But anyway, that just shows you, Clint's Clint likes people, and as a recently semi-retired person, um, I know there's there's some good feelings and bad feelings about that, but um, it's not so bad. There you go. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think I don't think we're at a point in our society where lawyers are liked as well as firemen. <laughs> I, I, I have to agree. <laughs> Clint, thank you very much. Appreciate your service. Okay. Nothing else from council or any further discussion? Right. Um, so this would be a vote on the amendment to the resolution. Has there's been a motion and a second? And I'd ask you to vote. All council members present voting in the affirmant and the affirmant. So that amendment becomes a resolution and we can a motion and a second on the underlying resolution. No, you just vote on just the amendment. Okay. The, the resolution as amended is um, eligible for vote then at this time, if no further discussion. Please vote. All councilmen present voting in the affirmative. Resolution 2017-33 as amended is adopted. Okay. That concludes this meeting of the Norfolk City Council. Thank you everyone for your time tonight.